Hello everybody, I am Samuel 15 the Dragon Team here tonight, and uh, welcome to Pava uh, Alternative Music Talk, where each and every other week or so, I talk about something to do with, that's going on within the uh, alternative music genre, whether it be a band, or, or a, uh, something about a band, or like a band in town, or something along those lines, or just talk about an album review, or just talk just for the sake of talk, we're talking about the genre in general. But this week I'm going to be talking about Cage the Elephant's uh, new CD, Melophobia, and my opinions on that. As always, if you are new to this channel and have yet and or have never see, uh, seen one of these paper videos, um, all you'll be hearing is my rambling, mumbling voice. So if you're not into that, please and kindly leave. And you'll only be seeing this this picture, which is the album art. Uh, artwork of the newest, uh, of their new, off their new CD. Um, so yeah, without further ado, let's get right into it. Oh, also, um, you won't be hearing any of the music tracks, so sorry about that. <laughs> if you were trying to get a sample. Uh, anyway, uh, let's get right into it. Um, I'll be honest, um, I really have actually have yet to really, uh, listen to uh, one of the previous, to either of the previous albums, uh, their self uh, titled debut album Cage the Elephant. They had the songs in Aiden Arrest for the Rickin and Back Against the Wall, which basically skyrocketed into the top of alternative charts. And then from there, they just kind of been writing the mediocre chain for a little bit, honestly. I wouldn't really consider them a uh, mainstay in the alternative genre now. I mean, sure, they're they're there, and they have a big in they have a pretty good influence, but. I just don't think any of their songs up to this point have yet to come to power with what those songs did for them. And it's kind of unfortunately true with this uh, newest album, Melophobia. And I was honestly a little underwhelmed. Um, not, not that uh, Come a Little Closer and Cigarette Daydreams were not, are not good songs. No, they're really good songs, and those are the songs most people buy this album for. And I think think that this album was better than uh, "Thank You, Happy Birthday," because I really haven't really heard of that. There's like one good song on it, you know, like maybe one one or two other songs that got some alternative music play. But "Come a Little Closer" and "Cigarette Dreams" uh, did get some uh, mainstream play, but not much. Uh, I do like "Cigarette Daydreams" a lot, though. It's actually my favorite song they have uh, came out with thus far. But the whole entire album in general, maybe it's not a big huge thing of this indie, because even though they are in the uh, wider alternative genre, their particular niche is indie, um, independent. And they, and indie, even though it's technically a term, has its own unique little style to it. And basically, they most people that are from indie, for, for, for some reason, are from Europe. <laughs> I don't know why this is. You're from Canada, or like certain parts of like California, or like underground. They think they're too hip or something like that. <laughs> anyway, you guys get the idea. Um, I don't. With other albums I've reviewed up to this point, there was other stuff off that album, off that album that I enjoyed, other than the main stuff. And I cannot say this about. This uh, album, the, the the this about this album. The only real songs I like are the two songs that have already been played. Take your leave, it's okay. And uh, telescope, same thing with Halo. But you know, it's nothing different from what KG Elephant has done before. Just kind of soft, just that indie sound and teeth. Just at the end of teeth, I think they're trying to give out some kind of message and. Halo, where some of these songs that just have like have like hidden messages with them, and they're really deep, and basically sound something off of like a massive <laughs> acid trip or something. And if you've seen the interviews like I have, they do seem like they get they they, they seem like they might be potheads. Maybe they're just quirky. It's possible they're both. I don't know, but that's just what I get. Uh, that's just the feel I get off of. Uh, Cage the Elephant. They're really good talents, I agree, but I just don't think that um, none of the songs have this, so after uh, the first album, 
got popular, you know, or like too really big. I feel like they're not doing as well as they could. Maybe they have the whole entire Kurt Cobain Nirvana complex, meaning they never really wanted to get popular in the first place. I don't know. That's what it sounds like to me. Maybe they they maybe enjoy being where they're at, you know, and they like being where they don't like having being mainstream, I guess. But that's fine. That's whatever. Um, like I said, there's nothing really that stands out to me outside of the uh, "Come a Little Closer" and "Cigarette Daydreams." They're both really good songs, and those themselves are my and them and they're in the uh, and and the miss spot on my um alternative playlist and several of them, but you know, I'll, it just doesn't. I feel like they could have done more. Yeah? I mean, I expected more from this album. You know, when I to me a good album is not and just an album that has like a few good songs on it. It's if it's an album that has a good few few good songs on it and a bunch of other stuff to back up those good songs that are also good in their own right. Granted never good enough to be on mainstream radio or alternative or even like radio stations in general for the most part. But they're good. And I don't feel like any of these anything else in the scum uh, uh, any of these songs off this album are really all that good. It just forever might actually, which is the one the the fourth track on the song, might actually uh, get some uh, mainstream attention just because of Alison Mozart, which is for it's, many of you people don't know, but if you're like in the alternative know how, uh, she's been in several uh, kind of bands, and her biggest band from what I've the biggest band that I would know, she was in a. Uh, I forgot the exact name of the band, but it's one of uh, um, Jack White from the White Stripes uh, side projects. She was like a backup singer. I think she was like the Rancho Rancho Coos or no, the Dead Weather Club. Yeah, she's one of the uh, singers from the Dead Weather Club, and um, it's a good song. You know, it just features her vocals and the band just jamming out without the main singer of the group having to do anything of himself. It's good, but. It's not my kind of thing, you know. This album is good, but I just... I feel like they could have done more. Um, yeah, I guess... So if, you, if I was going to recommend someone to, to buy this album, I would say only if you're a Cajun Elephant fan. And even then, I don't know. I mean, it's a good album, and I don't... It's a good album, but I just feel like the only reason it's a good album is because of the of two songs, in my opinion. The rest are just meh. If you're just an alternative fan, maybe you should get it, maybe you shouldn't. It's up to you whether or not you want to get it. I personally recommend against it, but just me. Um, the only other songs I can think of that are worth mentioning are like maybe Telescope, Just Forever, Take It or Leave It, maybe Halo, but they're, like, they're meh. They're all just meh to me. Maybe I'm just being a little bit harder on the indie genre because. Indie isn't always my thing. I'm not always the biggest fan of the indie. I'm sorry, I'm not. So, in my opinion, might be a little biased. You know, but isn't everyone's opinion about music biased for the most part? Seriously. Yeah, like I said, if you're looking for, if you're looking for well to see what else is on the album, um, track number two will come a little closer. And track number ten, cigarette daydreams. Those are only the songs that are worth uh, that you should get. You know, basically the songs you heard off like alternative radio stations. That's basically about it. Um, so in terms of uh, what the rating, I'm gonna honestly give it. Right, to me, for those who don't know, 5.5 for me is average. It's right down the middle. That's average. And so I'm not actually gonna give it a 6.7, which is basically. Slight, more or less slightly above it's pretty much uh, seven is good and it's basically somewhere between it's about, it's pretty good basically <laughs> that's what I have to say it's pretty good you know I don't think you should miss out on cigarette daydreams or come a little closer I think you definitely should get these two songs but the rest I don't really recommend um, they're just kind of filler I guess and I mean, if you if you're the into KG off in the D and D genre, I say say go ahead, go for it. But it it's very much so an acquired taste, even in the alternative genre, in my opinion. But that's just my opinion. I could be wrong. Some of you people will 
will we'll say I'm wrong, but oh well. Um, so yeah, hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Uh, please like, subscribe for further content, and I'll see you guys next time.